Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a story about a bus driver in Texas who has a very frightening encounter and this bus was full of kids. That's next. Hey guys, all right, so it has been snowing like crazy up here in the Sierra Nevada. I delayed my video to the last minute today. It cleared up somewhat, it stopped snowing, but apparently in the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada, they're getting four, five, and six feet of snow. Pretty, pretty crazy. That's gonna be uh, really nice next spring for the creeks, rivers, lakes, wildlife, trees, everything. So tonight's beer, today's beer, is a Black Butte Porter. There we go. And that is by the Deschutes Brewery out of Bend, Oregon. So that, keep me nice and toasty while I tell a story today. Look at that. There we go. Yeah, kind of fun seeing a really good storm come through the area. I just love it. So today's story takes place in Texas, a town called Round Rock, Texas. And Round Rock, Texas was known for this crossing of this creek in the 19th century by wagon trains because the water was low there and they could easily cross the creek there. This was called Brushy Creek, which winds through Round Rock, Texas. And this particular spot along Brushy Creek has literally a big round rock that the pioneers, people in wagon trains could identify when they were heading west or going through Texas. Also interesting about this Brushy Creek, it's got a history of Sasquatch encounters. This is Texas, by the way. In fact, there's a road that parallels Brushy Creek called Harry Man Road. Isn't that interesting? The original lore legend was a boy got lost during this rainstorm from a wagon train that was near Brushy Creek, and he stayed near Brushy Creek and lived there, grew up there, and became this hairy man and whenever people would try to cross or go around that area of the creek, he would intimidate them and try to scare them out of the forest. That was the, the legend or the origin of the story. But there's also been encounters, Sasquatch, Bigfoot encounters along this brushy creek because there's these really large trees and this creek meanders through the town and then goes out into the country, fairly rural. I read, uh, a comment that somebody had on a video that I saw about Brushy Creek and this person mentioned they were camping along this creek, Brushy Creek, and late at night they heard something large on two feet coming down the creek in the middle of the night. So that is the, that is where our story begins. We are also along the Middle Fork of the Feather River in the Northern Sierra. So just a few years ago, in Round Rock, Texas, a school bus driver named Janice was doing a late afternoon run, dropping off kids. She was following this brushy creek. She turned to go across this bridge, but before the bridge was the train tracks. 
And if you know anything about school buses, they have to stop about 15 feet before the train tracks, open up the door, and listen for a train. Probably for good reason, because at some point in history, obviously a bus got hit. And so Janice stopped the bus right before the tracks, opened up the door to listen for a train, and right then, she heard the kids in the back of the bus yelling. One of them was saying, look, look, there it is, look. She put the bus in park and was looking in her rear view mirror to see what they were looking at. She couldn't quite see it, so she got up and was walking down the aisle and she was yelling for the kids to get back to their seats. While she was walking towards the back of the bus, the kids were, most of them were pressed up against the window looking out the back of the bus on the left side. And she could hear this loud banging sound on the side of the school bus. Crazy. And she could just see and look down from one of the seats and she could see this large brown shape kind of crouched down next to the bus almost leaning up against the bus. And at first it looked like just a large brown furry shape. And then she thought it kind of looked almost like a buffalo. It was so large. Then she saw this large arm go up, large ape-like arm go up and start slamming the side of the bus again. At this point, one of the girls was crying hysterically, just, just in tears, just freaked out. The other kids were all yelling, pointing at it, and she was telling them, get back in your seats, get back in your seats. She went up and looked out the window again, and she could still see this shape, just almost literally, this shape leaning up against the back of the bus, wasn't even looking at them. Janice couldn't believe what she was seeing. The kids were still yelling. They weren't listening to her. Some of them are still crying. And she thought, do I call animal control? Do I call the police? Should I just drive away when this thing's leaning up against the bus? I don't know what that's gonna do. And then she thought, this might not be very good for my career. <laughs> uh, some crazy bus driver seen potentially a Sasquatch with their kids in the bus. And so she thought, I'm just gonna go up and get my phone, maybe take a picture. And so she was heading back up to the front of the bus to get her iPhone, one of the kids said, there it goes, there it goes. And she looked out the other window and she saw it running towards the creek. Huge, broad shoulders, kind of a smallish head. She just saw the back of it still, couldn't see the face. Arms were swinging, legs were pumping like this really fast though, just really fast. It went parallel to the road and then jumped in the brush and then she saw the brush and the trees shaking and then it disappeared into the brush. And she thought, okay kids, sit down, get in your seats and she immediately got the bus going, had the door closed and went across the bridge and left. And she was just shaken by this whole thing. She didn't know what to do or say with the kids. <laughs> they had all seen it. Texas isn't typically a place that you would think of Sasquatch, but there's been a number of encounters that I've read about, I've heard about, that I know about in Texas. And you people in Texas can tell me this too, as well. Uh, there's the Sam Houston National Forest. There's been a number of encounters there. Big state, and there's just a lot of variety in Texas. So Texas is not known for Sasquatch, but it kind of is, <laughs> interestingly enough. It's a great state. Uh, there's the Sam Houston National Forest, several campgrounds, a designated national forest, and there have been a number of encounters there that I know of. It's a really big state. There is a lot of variety in the, in the landscape, and there are encounters there, really interesting. And you people in Texas know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> That is my story for today. It is a shorter story. I do have a vacation time coming up and I'm going to be getting out doing stories in the in the forest and we're going to be setting up that hot tent 
getting that stove going and I got a bunch of stories and if you guys have your own story that you would like me to retell please send to basecampchris2 at gmail.com I'll put a link below in the description but I'm getting some really interesting stories from you guys and I have not been really advertising basecampchris2 at gmail.com but I think I want to do more of that. that was, it's really interesting. I get a lot of comments in the comments section. So really interesting. So thank you for watching, you guys. I am going to do a little bit of hiking around before the end of the video. But thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Keep hiking. All right, this is the middle fork of the Feather River right down here. Look at that. Isn't that great? Keep hiking.